true gaseous very very gaseous the old man was but why call me mad the disease had not dulled my senses but sharpened them above all was my sense of smell frighteningly acute i could smell all things all over baltimore city especially the old man who'd moved into the house with that arse of his i didn't hate the old man i think it was his arse yes he had the arse of a volcano a foul loud sounding arse that would fill the entire house with noxious fumes so that slowly by degrees i determined i would take the old man's life and rid myself of his horrid arse forever <laughs> Do you fancy me mad? Eh? Well, mad men know nothing. You should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded. With what thought? With what caution? <laughs> I was never kinder to the old man than I was the entire week before I killed him. And then every night, at midnight, I would walk toward his bedroom door and start to hear those farts, those horrible... <laughs> and the smell, the smell. I could hardly get near the door. And then on the eighth night, I put a wet towel around my face and I approached the door. I opened the door, oh, so slowly. And there he was in the bed and I could hear it for myself, the sounds coming from that horrible ass. I could take it no more. In an instant, I was upon him. I grabbed him from his bed and pulled him onto the floor. And then I pulled the heavy mattress on top of him. And I sat down upon the mattress and waited for the farting to stop. <coughs> <coughs> he was dead. The old man was dead. I was free of that horrid ass forever. <laughs> if you still think me mad, Listen to how wisely I proceeded. Well, to begin with, I, I cut off his arms. I hacked off his legs. I lobbed off his head. I threw all of these out the window. A few more body parts lying around Baltimore City. Nobody would notice that. But his ass, that hideous ass, I buried underneath the floorboards of my living room. <laughs> I was free. In a couple of hours, a knock came to the door. There was two members of the Baltimore City Police Department who had been out accosting the citizenry. <laughs> but I had nothing to hide from them, so I welcomed them in. I told them, sit down, have yourself a glass of tea, perhaps a Coca-Cola. And I placed my chair over the very spot where beneath I buried his hideous arse. <laughs> So we started to talk pleasantries. We talked about the Orioles and the Ravens that depressed us terribly. But suddenly, I began to hear a sound. I could hear it. It grew louder and louder. Could it be that the policemen did not hear it? No, they heard it all right. And they were mocking me. They knew as the sound grew louder. Finally, I could take it no more. And I said, yes, yes, I confess. Here, tear up the floor. Tear up the floor. It is the bleating of his hideous arse. <laughs>